If you feel you missing out with all everything happened in the AI world, chill. Because for some reason, all the AI labs decided to launch their biggest things last week, hoping that all of us will stay on top of it. We don't have to. What we need to do is to understand what's happening in the long run to make the connections that make us feel better, to see the underlying truth of that. So let's go. My first AI wow is not related to any of the models launched last week. It's about chess gladiators. Because how do you truly test an AI's intelligence? The benchmarks are good, especially in-house benchmarks, but it's easy enough to train the model to be good with the benchmarks and test. So how about just launching all these models in the wild world of chess, especially when chess is not their specialization? This was the idea behind launching Kaggle Game Arena, where all the main LLMs from Google, and Tropic, Grok, OpenAI can compete against each other in complex games, starting with chess. As DeepMind's CEO Demis Hassabis noted, games have been always a proving ground for AI. But this is different. This isn't about superhuman performance like we saw with AlphaGo playing Go with a human champion and actually winning that game. No, this is about generalist AI try to reason their way through the game they weren't specifically built for. Now, it doesn't take very long uh, for Grok uh, to just straight up forget about its night in the middle of the board. What's interesting also is Grok doesn't write its thoughts out. That's what I've noticed two days into the tournament. The other, the other bots they explain all their reasoning. As ridiculous and dumb and absurd as it is, Grok is just like Bishop C4. Because, you know, because it's going to be legend, wait for it, dairy. Like, I, I don't know. It just kind of has like a Barney Simpson vibe to it. Bishop C4 uh, and Gemini just simply takes the knight. That's, you know, it just leaves the knight in the middle of the board. I never said these games would be good. I said this matchup would be good. I watched the match between Grok and Gemini Pro, and it was a pure theater. They act like us, amateur chess players. Five moves, like a grandmaster sometimes, and then followed by 10 moves as a hangover amateur. It was hard to explain why this model would make this move. It was really hilarious. So the wow here is not about finding the next Alpha Zero. We already have superhuman chess engines. The point of the game arena is to create a dynamic, objective, and endlessly entertaining way to measure the strategic reasoning of generalist AI. Through this process, we see the flaws, we see how stupid their reasoning is. And with all the models, opening their reasoning is an important part for researchers to understand how these models work. Okay, my second wow is about GPT-5, launched last week by OpenAI. But not about the model itself, and not even about the messy launch, considering how much work they put into working with influencers, developers, media, and preparing the whole campaign for launching GPT-5, at least two, three, probably more weeks before that. When GPT-5 was launched, we saw many articles coming from the main influencers with detailed diaries, how they were using GPT-5 for the last two weeks. We saw it from Ethan Mollick, we saw it from Simon Wilson. The funny thing is that both of them say that GPT-5 just do stuff. As if it was a phrase from press release or something, but maybe they both came up with the same exact phrase. I don't know. What surprised me is that so much work put into the usage of the model that influencers reported to be their daily partner turned out to be so messy from the point of actual users who got used to using all the suggested models that OpenAI had. They had had GPT 4.0, they had 01, they had 03, and different people would use different models for different workflows and even different role plays, whatever it means, you naughty humans. We saw that from Reddit discussions after the launch of GPT-5, people were furious about losing their companion. Yeah, exactly that. 
when GPT-5 launched as a model, we all realized that we lost something that was very special. It was not my experience, to be honest. I have a lot of workflows with GPT-4.0, but when I tried it with GPT-5, it was basically the same. But I think the problem was, and maybe still is, with the router, this new thing that OpenAI introduced, when you collaborate with the model, this smart router chooses for you which model is needed for your task. And some people reported that suddenly GPT became extremely stupid. My experience and the experience in my household was very positive. We have very good results with GPT-5, but it depends on the day, actually. When I tried to use it yesterday, it was much dumber. Um, dumber. Then I tried to use it today, it was a good quality. So these uneven results, this complete ignorance about the 700 million users a week and potentially more is a funny wow to notice. Now Sam Altman and all the team carefully reads every Reddit thread, listens to Twitter, understanding what did they miss. My wow is about how they encapsulated and bubbled in their own own world thinking how to prepare influencers and developers to say good things about GPT-5. Not thinking about all these millions and millions and millions and millions of users who actually use GPT-5 for like enormous amount of tasks that developers and influencers can even come up with. We still need to see how GPT-5 performs. There is still not enough evaluations. It's still all over the place. I believe the team will fix it pretty soon. I like GPT-5. ChatGPT was always my first model to go to, but with this new model, I haven't noticed big difference in quality. I believe they will fix it. And the another interesting notion here is that it's not that much about the quality of a model now. It's much more about the quality of user experience and what we can do with these models. A lot to learn for every company. And last week was crazy week because we also saw GPT OSS, the new open weight model from OpenAI launched on Hugging Face. That was a very important milestone for OpenAI to become open. We saw new Claude Opus, and then we saw Genie 3 from Google. Anyway, launching big models in bulk is not what users need. So the thing and revelation for all the companies should be to think about the millions of users they actually serve. So yeah, we crossed this invisible threshold about if the model is good or not. Now it's about relationship between the model and the end user. Not even about relationship of the model and a person who studies it researcher, influencer, developer. AI is in the world. Millions of people use it. Soon it will be billions. Maybe it is a billion people already. What are their relationship with these models? What are they using it for? How do they get used to these models? What are their workflows? And again, relationship with their thinking partners, because a lot of time the models are your mind space. Getting into this mind space, that's the biggest mess of the last week launch. Okay, our final wow this week comes from a company that has already mastered the human voice and now they're turning their attention to music. We're talking about Eleven Labs music and I want to show you how it works hands-on. Let's go. What song do you want to create? Describe your song. A song about summer on a lake with kids, uh, laughter, adults talking softly on the background. The heat is tender, the water is lovely, the ice cream is waiting in the freezer after a swim. <laughs> Sunrise pinks the water gold. Their feet on the dark stories told Whispers of the breeze and willow trees Echo after dancing on the waves days Okay, that's pretty cool. I need a song for Three Wows and One Promise. Let's see how it does with copyrighted part of it. A song with the main theme from Back to the Future about the sh 
show with the name three vows and one promise about the ai and the real world make it sound as back to the future main music theme oh my prompt appears to have violated our terms of service their terms of service please try again with a different prompt huh a song with a main theme a song that reminds a main theme from back to the future okay let's try with the reminds oh no still violated Okay, I bet if you tweak the prompt and come up with something in your own words uh, that describe it more precisely, you will come up with a good melody that will remind you of Back to the Future. Anyway, that's a next level of creating music. I'm not sure how musicians will feel about it. I, as a user, of course, for me, it's easier to use this tool to create music if I need it than to, you know, approach a musician, um, have all this interaction time back and forth so that's definitely saving my time I hope for the musicians it will save their time if they have a blank page moment if they uh, want to experiment with different styles so I hope that will be a great instrument for them how are we supposed to follow all the AI news if almost every AI lab launches their best models in one week we don't we don't, we can relax, we can chill, and we can see what was the coolest part of it and what was the underlining truth that would help us think about AI and the world we're building with it. This is the thing about three wow and one promise. We are building our own understanding, not depending on the hype of the AI world. I mentioned Jenny 3 from Google, and that's my problem with models that launched only with demo. Demo always look good. That's the definition of demo, to demonstrate the best of the model. So when you cannot try it, when you cannot actually put your hands on it, it doesn't really matter. On this show, a promise is about something incredible on the horizon, but something that isn't quite here yet. And Genie 3 from Google DeepMinds is exactly that. Genie 3 is currently offered only as limited research preview to select academics and creators. And it's a bummer! How am I supposed to judge and how am I supposed to say if it's a wow or not wow if I cannot try it? But we will try it at some point. Until then, it's just a promise. Thank you for joining Three Wows and One Promise. We'll be back next time to connect the dots, to save you from FOMO, to give you the ground and a few ideas how to think about AI and the real world. See you there. Until then, hit subscribe, follow us, and leave me what you think. Thank you.